Looking at the night sky full of stars, each of us sooner or later asks the question, can we ever reach distant galaxies and other star systems? Involuntarily, you think about how long it will take a spacecraft to reach planets that are many billions of kilometers away. Which direction to choose? Closest to us the Alpha Centauri system more immediately go to the constellation Canis Major. Regardless of the destination, the spacecraft will have to overcome a huge distance, the scale of which very difficult to convey. The Another Space Channel is with you and today we will find out how long it takes to get to other star systems. The first travelers, voyagers and pioneers, many people who are interested in space are familiar with the history of the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 research vehicles. In the late 70s, these probes went to study our solar system, focusing on Jupiter and Saturn. The spacecraft not only successfully completed the main task, but also embarked on a new mission, which turned out to be no less important. Scientists sent voyagers to explore the outer regions of the solar system, resulting in highly autonomous robots becoming the most remote objects from Earth ever created man. Of course, some viewers may recall the Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 vehicles, which went to conquer deep space even before the aforementioned messengers. However, these probes have not shown signs of life for a long time. In addition, the Voyagers have great speed and overtook their counterparts at the turn of the 2000s. Voyager 1 is currently on a distance of 21 billion kilometers from Earth, heading towards the constellation Aphiuchus. The space probe has a speed of 17 kilometers per second, making it the fastest spacecraft ever, leaving the solar system. We are interested in this handsome man because it is precisely the first Voyager has every chance of reaching other stars in the Milky Way galaxy. According to preliminary calculations, in about 40,000 years it will fly at a distance of 1.6 light. Years from the star Gliese 445, which is in the constellation Giraffe. By cosmic standards, this relatively small distance of 15 trillion kilometers. By this time, Voyager will have moved away from solar system for one light year. That is, even after four tens of thousands of years, the NASA probe will closer to native spaces and to the nearest star as Poth. Somewhere in 285,000 years, the apparatus will be able to approach Sirius, which is located in the constellation Canis Major and is at a distance 8.6 light years from us. By the way, this white dwarf is considered one of the closest stars to Earth. No less interesting fate awaits the second Voyager. Right now the device rushing towards the meeting with a space adventure at a speed of 15.4 kilometers per second relative to the Sun. Somewhere, in 300 years the messenger of humanity will reach the inner edge of the Oort cloud. The outer part of this, the hypothetical region is considered to be the approximate boundary of the solar system. To get through, or cloud, the probe will need about 30,000 years, after which it will head towards the stellar Andromeda systems. Voyager 2 will approach one of its stars Ross 248 at a distance 1.7 light years in 40,000 years. In about 300,000 years, the device will reach closest approach to Sirius, dispersing with him at a distance of 4.3 light years. As for the previously mentioned pioneers, despite the fact that the connection with them was long lost, they also continue their journey in silent space. Last, the radio signal from the Pioneer 11 probe was received on September 30, 1995. After that direction, the transmitting antenna was lost and the device continued its journey on its own. American, the probe flies towards the constellation Aquila which lies in the eastern branch of our galaxy, he will get to one of its stars four million years later. Thus, he has an incredibly long way to go. The tenth pioneer turned out to be a slightly more successful explorer since the last time he sent data to Earth on January 23, 2003. At that moment, the space traveler was 12 billion kilometers from the Earth and moving at a speed of 12.2 km s by the way until 1998 he 
was also the most distant man-made object until it was overtaken by the famous Voyager 1. The device flies at a speed sufficient to leave the solar system. Its course lies in towards the star Aldebaran. It is the gem of the Taurus constellation and one of the brightest stars in the night sky. Pioneer 10 will reach the vicinity of Aldebaran in 2 million years if it does not stumble along the way to unforeseen situations or will not be captured by space pirates unknown to science. By the way, this particular device will be the first to pass at a relatively short distance. From the star system, the Pioneer's temporary neighbor will be the HIP 117,796 system, part of the constellation Cassiopeia. The Space Hulk will approach her on distance of 0.76 light years. To do this, the probe will have to travel 90,000 years. Speed issues in the future of space travel. As we understand, the main problem of space flights is huge distances. At existing technologies, even traveling to the Red Planet is not an easy task, which needs the right moment to launch. At the closest approach of the orbits of Mars and the Earth, the distance between the two planets is 54.6 million kilometers. And even for such flights, factors must be taken into account, such as the speed of the planets, spacecraft flight speed, solar attraction, the need for course correction. NASA launched Mariner 7 in 1969, who reached the Red Planet in just 128 days. However, it should be understood that the general, the mass of the probe was only 412 kilograms. For example, the dry weight of the newest manned, SpaceX's Crew Dragon is 6,400 kilograms. Although it is not designed to interplanetary travel, a flight to Mars will require the creation of much heavier and sophisticated ships, not to mention travel to other stars. Elon Musk's company right now is engaged in the development of the reusable interplanetary space transport system Starship, the dry mass of which, presumably, is equal to 400 tons. At the same time, the starting, the mass of such a giant exceeds 5,000 tons. In other words, existing technologies do not allow to reach a speed that will enable the vehicles to overcome huge distances in space in a relatively short period of time. Engineers and scientists around the world are actively working to solve this problem. However, even the most daring projects, far from the desired results. There are many options for moving around space, and each of they have their pros or cons. Many motors or drives are still in theoretical areas and are still very far from implementation. The most economical and, as a result, the slowest mode of movement is the ion drive. A few more decades ago, such a system was considered closer to science fiction than to real life. However, the mission, Deep Space One in 1998, proved that ion engines not only work, but also bring real benefit. Using 81.5 kilograms of fuel, such an installation dispersed the DS-1 to 56,000 hour. True, it took her as much as 20 months to do this. If we assume that it is with such, the speed of humanity will send the apparatus towards the star Proxima Centauri. Then it will need 81,000 years to fly a distance equal to 4.24 light years. During this time for, the Earth will be replaced by 2.7 thousand generations of people. Another method of space travel is the principle of gravitational maneuver. This method was used by the legendary voyagers and in 1976, the Helios 2 device managed to accelerate over 240,000 km h subject to constant. Maintaining this speed, the probe could reach Proxima Centauri in 19,000 years. A lot of discussions are going on regarding the electromagnetic drive M drive. Scientists, it is still debated whether an RF drive with a resonant plane actually works. Its concept was proposed back in 2001, but the device is still undergoing tests that are not, can give an ambiguous answer to the main question. Is the M-Drive functioning? According to theoretical calculations, such an installation will allow you to get to Pluto, which is on average removed 
from the Earth at 5.9 billion kilometers in 18 months. Journey to Proxima Centauri. In this scenario, it will take about 13,000 years. Among other transportation systems that inhabit, in a theoretical plane, there are nuclear fusion rockets, a thermonuclear ramjet, a laser, a sail, and even a drive powered by antimatter. Science fiction fans may also remember the famous project of Miguel L. Cubier, who in 1994 proposed the so-called warp drive. Since the concept of instantaneous movement by stretching the fabric of space-time actually does not provide for the time spent on the flight, we will not consider it. Instead, let's turn our attention to nuclear fusion engines in an antimatter facility. In the first case, we are talking about the theoretical achievement of a speed equal to 12% of light, which will allow flying to Proxima Centauri in just 36 years. To reach Barnard's star, located in the constellation Ophiuchus at a distance of 5.96 light years, the transport system on nuclear fusion it is necessary to fly for 50 years in the 70s the british interplanetary society studied in detail such a project called daedalus a two-stage system even for the most according to conservative estimates it was supposed to weigh about 60,000 tons which made it unimaginably expensive as for the antimatter engine we are talking about a hypothetical installation with high efficiency and fuel economy. A few milligrams of this fuel generates more energy than a hydrogen bomb explosion with a power of 10 megatons according to estimates published at the Joint Propulsion Conference and Exhibit. A two-stage antimatter launch vehicle can fly 40 years before all that or Proxima Centauri. This is despite the fact that obtaining one gram of fuel to drive on antimatter cost more than a trillion dollars. In theory, with a sufficient supply of antimatter space, the ship can be accelerated up to 50% of light speed. Upon reaching such indicators, the flight to 4.24, I light here will take about eight years. It would take about 17 years to fly to Sirius. As we can see, humanity is still looking for ways to quickly, and most importantly, economically, travel through space. At this stage, we do not have technologies that will allow to overcome a distance of a couple of light years in a relatively short period of time. However, there are already first successes in this direction, and who knows, perhaps in a couple of dozen years in the direction of Alpha Centauri, the first research probes will go. Like this video. If you like the new release, subscribe to the channel and share your opinion on the future of space travel in the comments below the video. All the best and see you soon.